Hey guys, and welcome to Cafe Space Angel, a little game I found on itch.io, itch .io. Itch .io. yeah, it's been a long time since I did an actual like, visual, visual novel, I mean, since I've been busy and hiatus kind of, been making a lot of music, a lot of projects, helping around some projects, doing some edits from the commercial work and some other things, so some things I can't say and some things I cannot wait to freaking release. And yeah, I'm just excited, just excited, man. <laughs> I really like this composer, uh, composer, whoever's made this song for Cafe Space, I like it. So let's get into what's it about. Cafe Space, by the way, this is like part one of the story. So, Cafe Space Angel is a free-to-play romance visual novel with a deep world-building and heartbreaking story. Part 1 consists of 8,400 words and includes a prologue and day one. Damn, dude. The story is about a Yushi... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going to say this wrong. Um, Yashu, Yashi... Uh, Yasushi... Yasushi... Toru turned his life around not that long ago. He entered the university and even made a couple of friends, but still felt out of place to return the feelings he forgot in his childhood. He came back to his hometown, but something somewhere went terribly wrong. What on earth is this place? Cafe Space Angel. And this is part one, so I'm excited for that. I'm gonna find out what the story is about. Also, just letting you guys know on one of the projects I'm doing. If you guys know um, one of the visual novels I'm still making currently, and it's almost done because of the Reddit, and I'd never done this thing before, a theory video on Hex Vex's game. Freaking. <laughs> oh, God. You guys. I'm gonna love it. Like, it, it took me so long. You guys. It's beyond you. Hexvex beyond you game. I'm doing a theory. On the main villain of the series, basically. But I only went to route one route. I still have to figure out the other ones and what the meaning of it in the psychological sense. And. Yeah. I really. Okay. Enough of me rambling. Let's get into the story. I like the art design. I like the little halo or like the rings like you know in other planets that they have it's freaking cool so let's get started all right erica hey torukun over here she immediately waved her hand as she saw me what the freaking a all right mm. she immediately waved her hand as she saw me from afar I frowned and increased my pace pulling on a bucket hat. Oh, I knew it was a bucket hat. I thought it was a fedora. When I first saw his character, you guys are going to see it in a second. Hold on. Why are you yelling like that? Oh, that's pretty not. I like. Oh, ooh. I like the setting of this. Erica was sitting on the grass with her hair blowing in the cool summer breeze. Dot, dot, dot. Why did you drag me out here? Look, look at the stars. Take that, take a seat. Shivering in the wind, I put my hands deep into my sweat short pockets. Did you call me to look at the stars? Is it, is this a date? Turrican, my sweet summer child. I called you to say goodbye. Oh, damn. Well, well, go on a date when you grow up. Oh, you dick. <laughs> She winked, causing my ear to turn red and my heart to race. I was just joking about the day. Why did she say that? H hey! It's not like I'll be gone forever. Da 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 dot. Sit down already. I didn't grumble or argue. I just sat down next to her. A lot has changed over the past year. Erica started junior high. And after her sister died, she moved in with her grandmother and we stopped seeing each other at all. She decided to leave the cat in her parents' house. Sometimes I can, still, uh, I can see him through the window, but with Erica gone from that place, I didn't feel right playing with him. And what's more, she has suddenly grown up. Grown up excuse me, And I can't reach her anymore. I mean, don't you guys have cell phones or something? I don't know. 
It's it's been so long. It's been such a <laughs> excuse me. I don't have water or anything, so I might mess up a couple times. <clears throat> it's been a long time since we admired the stars together. I doubled up my legs, muttering something in agreement, stealthily looking at Erica. Oh, I hit the mic. Well, she didn't take her eyes off of uh, the sky, as if she was trying to find something here. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like the twinkle effect on this. Oh, I like the rustle effects in this freaking grass. Oh my god! Did you know that the stars are human souls? I did actually. Yeah, do you know? Funny thing, I have heard stories about that too. Ah, uh, shit. I forgot how it goes. Uh, maybe she might explain it. No, that's totally crap. No, actually. In other words, like, you know, the stars are basically dead stars. When there's a shooting star, it's like a ghost star or something. I could be wrong. I remember I researched something about that. I could be wrong. Who knows? Well, let's, let's see. You can't say that for sure. Actually, I can. Erica interrupted me before I could finish. She would have never done that before. My grandmother told me that... When a person dies, the soul leaves the earth and remains shining in the sky as a star. Her voice went quiet, but then corners of their mouth have stretched out in a smile. I wonder, when I die, will my star shine as bright? That's enough! I reflectively flew off the handle, but then stopped. After her older sister died, I wanted to be careful about what I said. I thought all that grief built up in her heart was about to burst. But she hasn't cried since that time. Erica didn't react. Her body was still, but it shivered slightly. There was a depression, uh, depressing silence in the cool summer air that made it hard to breathe. What should I do to get things back on track? I saw your mother recently. She already has such a big belly. <laughs> uh, she said it's a boy. Yep. I am happy. Erica closed her eyes and smiled. She seemed really happy, even though she never seen she missed her parents. Will Erica come back home if her mother needs help? It got me thinking. When did things hit a rough patch? Ugh. Excuse me. <laughs> Oh my god. After Erica's family started expecting the baby. Or was it earlier than that? The idea of having another child ran through my dad's head. And this is exactly what casted a shadow on the relationship of my parents even more. If ma my um, if my mom had just agreed with him, but she never did. And they didn't make peace as they used to. What? I had nowhere else to go to avoid seeing it. When I asked for st stability, I meant it to be a good, not bad. I had it coming. Taruka? Hey. Should I bring you to Sick Cat? What, what is that? What, what is that city or town? Ah, but I thought it's our last. Have you given, collecting th uh, given up collecting them? Oh, it's, a, it's like a toy or something? Has much, uh, <clears throat> has much, has everything changed? Oh, how much has everything changed? How did I, why did I read that wrong? My bad. It seems as if she was getting further away from me more and more. Erica shook her head as she was trying to be herself again. No! I'm gonna eat all that and them, oh, it's a food? Uh, them all. Bring them, uh, bring me some of that, uh, that, wait, bring me some that I don't have. You have such a good memory. What's the point of your collection if you don't even remember what you have? I don't have that much money. You're a good boy, Turrican. A bit a greedy one. I'm not greedy. Forgive me, Turrican. Huh? What are you apologizing for? You've been so lonely lately. And recently, uh, Kentai and I found an anthill. My mom also promised to buy me a video game console if my grades are good. It had nothing to do with what she said. 
Even though I tried to show that my life was interesting and eventful even without her. I'm sorry. I hope you found a lot of friends. Among the ants? <laughs> I can't even call Kenta my friend. He's stupid. <laughs> she tousled my hair and my hat fell back. Hey, stop it. Come on, give me a hug. Play well with others in Tokyo. Oh, okay, this is us when we're younger or something, I'm assuming. Oh, I like the little star effect that's going up. So, all right, I like the glow effects. All right, you guys are doing good. I want to be proud of you. Oh, so she's like a babysitter or something? I'm assuming she is. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> dot, dot, dots. It really get me emotional, man. Oh, damn. So... Soft. Uh, mm, I bet. <laughs> oh, what the? Oh, the music clipped. Second July, twenty twenty, Tokyo. Interesting. Okay. Oh, hello. Oh, the bed, the room settings looks cool. What is that over there? You know, kind of reminds me. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. It reminds me of that cover album of Soul Leader, uh, or something like right here. Um, <laughs> head is splitting. I close my eyes tight. A thin streak of light shone through a gap between the curtains and right into my eyes. I buried my face into my pillow trying to hide from the harsh reality. What time is it now? Well, that was quite a dream. My ears were ringing, which kept me from hearing my phone vibrating on the table. The table. Blah, blah, blah. Still closing my eyes because of the light, I reached out to turn it off my to turn off my alarm and hit the edge of the bed of my elbow. Oh, I hate when that happens. Damn! You. My hands were unresponsive and my head was empty. I tried to turn it off. I tr tried to turn off my alarm clock, but clumsily clicking on the everything that just appeared on the screen. Oh, hello, Rin Takata. Oi! Hey, he answered. I don't know if that's a dude or a guy. Hey, Toru! Huh? What? The alarm clock spoke in the voice of Takata Rin, my friend from university. What the hell? Is everything alright with you? Is everything alright with me? I blinked and checked the time. I think I fell asleep right after I go home from university. And it's not morning, it's evening. My stomach growled and I writhed with a slight pain. I haven't, eat, uh, haven't eaten since morning, and yeah, I know the feeling. We've already started with you, without you. Well, once you started, go on. I'll make myself some noodles and finally get some rest. Hey, don't hang up. I was just kidding. It was a joke. Damn, he's such an evil voice. Wanna hear it? Who are you talking to? I'm not a tourist attraction. Hey, I can hear you too. I pushed into my temples with my free hand and mentally cursed all those who were able to enjoy themselves after the exams. All right, um, <laughs> and get dressed and prepare yourself. The rest of us are light anyway, so don't worry. We're all waiting for you. <laughs> I like this guy already, or girl, I don't know, I could be wrong. I wasn't all worried at all. I hung up, unable to defend my desire to stay at home and close my eyes. I had to go. After all, I promised myself not to be a black sheep anymore. I stretched like a cat and yawned. But first, I'll take a five minute nap. Yep, oh, and the five minutes goes into an hour. Who would have thought that living in a full life would be this tiresome? Oh, no, we all know it. Oh, hello, karaoke. Rooney, Rooney. Summer romance. Okay. Alright. I'm coming in. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. That's a nice effect that goes with the cup. Alright. The room was suspiciously quiet, except the background music. Dot dot dots. Am I too early? Or too late? Empty and crumbled beer cans were scattered on my table. My friends were sitting alone. Looks like the party was a failure. Hey! Oh wait, no, that's a different guy. Kenenshi Ken. She won't come! She? I looked at Takata, 
But he, oh, I was right. It was a dude. All right, good on me. But he was—he just rolled his eyes. And Miyuki, she had such a lovely curls. I had no idea you like curls. He smiled, uh, sort of ironically, not hiding uh, his annoyance. She had something special. Don't you say that about everyone? I sat down on the opposite side, taking off the hat. A cool breeze from the air conditioner blew across my slightly sweaty forehead, and I let out a sigh of relief. Shut up! What do you know about love? Kid! Why did I come at all? Judging by Kenichi's slanted eyes, most of the beer cans belong to him. And I got to stage where he blames everyone for his failures. You're such a drama queen. You only met recently. Takata let out a weary sigh and handed me a can of beer, carefully opening it for me. Thank you. From sleeping to drinking? Alright. Senpai, you're corrupting me. Oh god, I sound so weird when I just said that. I hesitated, but took a sip. You won't get, get it. It was like a song from Rooney Rooney. <laughs> what the hell is Rooney Rooney? How long did I sleep? I looked around the room and a poster caught my eye. Heh, it's clear now, another idol. Perhaps I'm behind the trends again. Meanwhile, Kenenchi was trying to hum a song, apparently remembering that he was at a karaoke, not a bar. I hope there was no cameras here and no one sees this shame, though you never know what people do in karaoke rooms. And we were always on the phone and not even saying one word. You know, she loved ice cream at the Raskin Bobbins. Every time I ask her, she shows me her food. She sent me ice cream. Vanilla with chocolate syrup. Oh, that does sound good, actually. It sounds like she sent the same photo to get rid of you. And why did you make me... Uh, I mean, why did you make her report to you? Is it some kind of flirting? It was a sweet ass. Takata Kit gave uh, Ken a poke on the rib. Let's skip the details. Count me out. I did my best for you. Ungrateful fools. For us? I asked her to bring her friends. So you wouldn't feel lonely, you damn bitches. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't feel. Neither do I. We looked at each other and finished our beer. So this was an attempt to arrange a group date? Well, I'm glad I didn't, and that didn't happen. Well, are you making an alcoholic out of him, Rin? He can't even drink yet. It gave me the creeps. Come on, say it even louder. It's you who should who should stop. Nappy Pampy. I don't know how to say that. <clears throat> Takata grimaced in disgust and straightens his wild hair. My grandmother was right. I should have had listened. Your grandmother? There is a curse on my family. These curses again. Nonsense. Stop being hot, haughty, Yoshi, Yoshi, Yosochi, Achochi. Shut up! I'm drunk. Uh, I knew you grew up in the country too. How come you didn't believe in curses? Believe it or not, Konoha is not a village. Who am I kidding? Veritably village. Hens are walking down the streets. Kenichi looked at me in surprise. Is there any Raskin bobbins? What kind of interest is that? Are you gonna, are you going there on vacation with your fake girlfriend? I I haven't been there in a long time. I scratched my head. The only cafe that seemed to fit in the description was the cafe of Erica's aunt. Say no more. Are you disappointing? Don't look at me like I'm in interfering your, with your love life. Hunts a village. And you too? Takata smiled, apparently enjoying this pointless uh, argy bargy. Everything is a village compared to Tokyo. Kenichi burst into tears again, sno snorting like a child. Will you give it a rest? No wonder girls give you the elbow. You're just unlucky. Man, stop crying already. I waved him away and dug into my bag. 
to get some uh, single use wipes. Bad luck is a curse as well! No, it is merely a chance. One day I'll tell you that <laughs> you're just an idiot. But not today. Perhaps. This summer, we, three country friends in Tokyo, would definitely find girlfriend. <laughs> I can't, I love the, how I voice and him drunk, it's funny. I graduated in Tokyo. And I don't even have an, an accent. Well, he will go without the wipes. Drunk jerk. What kind of cheap friends comedy bit is that? I demonstratively put the bag away. Let's go to the beach, I bet he has an innocent. Oh! Fireworks! Rin! We can go to Tanabata together! We need girls! What makes you think I'm even going to Tanabata with you? The point is asking for love, isn't it? It's not Valentine's Day after all. Never mind. He's got a dick. I'll die it. Takata, um, Takata took the remote control and began to mindlessly switching songs. He didn't seem to be in a good mood either, but he didn't show it, hiding his emotions behind a polite smile like a mask. He's different today. Did you take the day off? I can take him to the dorm if you need to go to work. I'll throw him in the nearest stinking dumpster. When is the day when the idiots are taken out? If it hadn't been for a Takata, I would never have contacted Ken. Yep. A long time one. What do you mean? I quit my job. I looked at him in surprise and looked away embarrassed. Anyhow, it's nice. It's not nice to stare at people. You've been working for about five years. Yeah. Same shit, different day. Hey, Takata Ren, that's my type of guy. <laughs> and free samplers of com <laughs> cosmetics that we give out to the customers as a bonus. He made a, you know I changed his Australian accent to like whatever I just did, just pointed on a deeper voice. Uh, he made a disdainful face as he felt unse uh, new seated. Excuse me, but your skin is so perfect. Yeah, you're damn right. I came up with the phrase from a commercial and I heard it on TV this morning at the breakfast. Thanks. Took out a plate along through, and I'm not sure that the commercial said the same. I would never have believed that you were so old. You better stop. <laughs> I smiled, but the strange feeling didn't leave me. Even the most patient people sometimes give up everything. Hey, don't you want to take a part-time job there? You can work there as well as you study. So you decided to find a replacement? No way. No thanks. Why not? Pay is good. Especially since uh, you live with your mother, don't you? I don't really need that money. I'm not an otaku or a lady killer. Especially not a cosmetic distributor. Takata snorted, obviously, <clears throat> expecting the reaction from me. Why did you ask if you knew I would refuse and after your complaints? It doesn't sound very appealing. You won't get a girlfriend being as poor as a church mouse. Sleepy Kenenshi jumped in the conversation. I hate to break it to you, but... But all those bimbos flirting with you to get into the dorm were just using you. But I already have a girlfriend. I gave a smug chuckle and broke into a grin. No, no one lies better than me. Dot, 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 dot. Yeah, he's like, all right, BS. <laughs> Is he asleep? Takata smiled and waved his hand. Shh, or you'll wake him up. No one needs it now. I leaned back on the sofa and sighed. And don't joke so much with him. He is naive. For months, he could not accept that you passed the entrance exams at the first try. And now a girlfriend? And given his condition, a fight cannot be avoided. Did he see through me? I always knew Takata was a much darker horse than me. 
don't you have a girlfriend? I snapped at him to change the subject and fell to thinking. Is it only me who's not interested in all this love crap? Ah, you say that. We never talked with him about this, although I saw several times he, how he smiles chatting with someone. Probably is someone from work. After all, he works with females, with the female staff. And if he's quite, it means... Takata, for some reason, took the thought and did not answer the question. So, no? Or not anymore? Women can be terrified and terrifyingly creepy. Oh, so he's gay. I'm, I'm assuming he's gay. Maybe. Huh? What an unexpected change of mood. Takata Senpai. What do you mean? So he's drunk as hell too? <laughs> Never mind. How can one forget that? Girls can be annoying, arrogant, stupid. I disagree on that statement right there. They're more smarter than us, they're more beautiful than us, they're more sexier than us, they're more tougher than us. That, I can guarantee that. But, to be creepy? But, keep an eye out. You'll never know when you'll run into a stalker. Oh god, I know the feeling. <clears throat> huh? It seems that he has some kind of emotional scars. You started remembering your first sex without me. What the fucking heck, Kenichi? I think the dream and reality got mixed up in his drunken brain. My first sex. He opened his mouth, whooping his drool, whooping his drool the back of his head. Started to say something, but stop. He's asleep on his feet. Nobody cares about your first time, Kenchen. Like a naughty big dog, he howled mournfully. And then, then, Toru! His eyes lit up again. What, what, me? Tell us about your first sex! Let's change the subject. We were... I wanna know! Am I a fiancé or what? Why are you, why are you bothering him? He just finished high school. He doesn't have to... Does Takata know I'm a virgin? They say you slept with a teacher, that when why that's why you went you so smart. <laughs> Nobody except you talks that kind of nonsense. I coughed and they fell silently. I don't know how much uh, how you found out that about that. I smiled enigmatically. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Is it true? Was she young or milf? <laughs> Married? He's really naive. Of course not. This is not true. So it turns out you're a virgin. Kenichi looked at me with a disappointing expression, and for some reason I felt very ashamed. Whatever gave you that idea? Do you think I can only sleep with a teacher? Are you insane? I thought since you're so smart and then... So... Was it you who came up with that nonsense? You watch porn too much. <clears throat> and I had sex if you... <laughs> you were so interested. <laughs> Back in junior high. In junior high? You amaze me! <laughs> so, you are a real genius. How did you even pass the entrance exams? You looked at me admiringly, apparently waiting for the re recipe for success. Well, at least he didn't start a fight. It's always one or two options. Don't die, first genius. Takata opened another one of Ken another canned beer and grinned, walking Ken. <laughs> it was a little creepy. Did he also hide his envy that I pass on the first try? Anyway, I sighed and prepared to tell my story. The story that helped me get out of my bottom in high school. The story I told many times and learn by heart so they wouldn't see me through. She was my childhood friend. Oh, are we passing the prologue? Are we getting to the day one thing? Oh, okay, oh, oh hello. Ooh. It was already late and the sun, oh, that's cool. It was already late and the sun had set, passing the baton to the, <clears throat> to the night lights of the city. Tokyo lived day and night. After the gathering, my head was still buzzing 
and the bright neon light made me feel sick, so I almost immediately turned into a side street away from this fuse. Takata and Kanenchi took a taxi back to the dorm, barely able to stand. Compared to them, I hadn't drank that much, and I couldn't afford to take a taxi. Not a single call from her. Quite strange. Despite the late hour, my mother didn't miss me. If she had been late at work, she would have written. After counting the money in my wallet, I decided to walk. She probably is very angry, and I didn't tell her I was going to karaoke. Takata hinted that it was time for me to look for a job, but I had no idea where I could get one because studying takes up almost most of my time. And that's where we get to the cafe. I yawned and stretched. And how did he juggle? No wonder he couldn't stand it. Ahem. W welcome. I pictured myself in a uniform greeting customers at a store and I shuddered. Brr. It's definitely not for me. I took out my phone and entered my address so uh, the navigator show <clears throat> could show me a walking route. Well, I used to come home from school on the only road to the village. And why does it get harder as you get older? Little older. I yawned again, and my clogged ears finally erased. Eased, excuse me. It's good to that tomorrow is a day off. I chose the route in the or, <clears throat> in order to have time to blow away the cobwebs. What a place I found. They'd rather find corpses here, or die themselves. My mind was traveling over manga about the undead and all other rubbish when I saw something so white that it seemed to glow in the dark. Oh, hello, kitty. <laughs> My heart skipped a beat and I instinctively leaned back. What? After a couple of seconds, I got a good look at it. A cat. I breathed a sigh of relief. And what are you doing here so white and homely among the dumpsters? It can't be helped. I love cats. I love dogs. <laughs> she looked at me uh, icily and began to lick her paw. Just like Erica's cat. I automatically switched my phone to the camera and tried to stay as still as possible in order not to scare the cat away. Memories of the childhood slipped through my mind and for some reason I felt sad. I wonder if he's already dead. Oh, It's been years. One. Two. Oh shit, my eyeballs. Oh damn! Flash! As a result, the cat, frightened by the bright light, slipped out of the frame. Photo of a dumpster. Great. I grinned at my luck and was about to delete the bad shot, but my finger slipped and opened the gallery. Sleeping drunk, Kenenchi, smiling Takata, mom's birthday. Oh, here's. I try to grow a mustache. I cr oh, cringe. I grimace, but didn't delete anything, quickly putting the phone in my pocket. Maybe photography is also not for me. I wanted to have a hobby, but in the end, I got some kind of disorder uh, chronicle of my life. Disoriented in the chronicle of my life. Blah, 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 blah. If I get killed in the dark all day, I hope no one hacks my phone. I raise my head up. Ugh. Oh, okay. That's cool ambient sounds. Did my life get better as everyone wanted it to? Even you. Oh, nice. Tomorrow, senpai. Oh, wow, nice. Oh, no. Okay, we know what that one is. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Shit, I forgot the name. Uh, I've seen this game before, but I don't think I played it before, though. I've seen this game before right here. Okay, I came to a noisy, crowded intersection. I hadn't lived in Tokyo for a long time, but I didn't know it all at all. Reliably, entirely on the map on my smartphone. Now left, I stared around like a tourist, puzzled by the thousands of signs that confused me. The smell of fried noodles from a diner immediately blasted my nose. A little further on, it mingled with the smell of freshly brewed Starducks coffee. Ha ha ha, nice and some greasy feminine perfume. Loud laughter, drunken office workers, and punks in rough boots on high platforms 
as if it was a still on stilts. All this is something I have nothing to do with and don't want to. The light was red and I looked up trying to get some privacy in a multi crowd. Skyscrapers stretched high into the sky and behind the lights of neon signs and advertising there was no stars at all. False lights of the night city. I was sure I had read this in a book somewhere but couldn't remember which one. This was strange because I usually remember all the authors and all the books I have ever read. Did I come up with such a pathetic phrase myself? Perhaps I could be good at a good writer. Why did I bother with my economics entrance exam? The light turned green and I went to the other side of the street, driven by the crowd. I'll never get used to this city. I took, uh, took out my phone again and it uh, opened the map. I think I'm on the wrong side. I'm going to have to go around. And it seems to be a normal situation, but the stress of recent weeks have made itself felt and my mood has faded sharply. It's almost 12. I could easily have taken the subway. I gave a wail and crouched down by a McRonald's entrance. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. And why doesn't she text me? Should I bring something home? I got up and decided to look, uh, look through the windows to see if there was a long quiet at the checkout. As I looked around at the customers and my eyes caught the familiar ponytail. Da 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 da. Wow, just like my mom. <laughs> Does anyone else still do that? So old fashioned and childish. The young woman was dressed in an expensive corporate suit and looked out the place among teenagers in a gaudy, shabby clothes, shabby clothes. She was laughing loudly and was jokingly jostling uh, her companion in some idiotic check trousers. The odd couple they picked up their food trays and turned to face the exit, searched to an empty table. They argued for a long time where they should sit and almost began to swear at each other. I could see their faces. Are you kidding me? I stood up there for a while, st staring straight at my parents, but they didn't see me. Wait, that's their parent. That's his parents. When I love a woman, everything else in the world is forgotten. Forgotten. Excuse me. How do you say that? Maparasu. Santa. Maraparasunta. I guess. I. I'm pretty sure I said that. What did I know about love? Maybe it's okay to love and hate, to break up and get together, and not to get a, da not get a damn of one of those who are hurt to look at? Maybe I'm too hard on them because I never loved. But I did. My thoughts were mixed up with the noise of Tokyo. I turned abruptly and walked back and pulled my bucket hat down low over my eyes. Standing at the traffic light again, I noticed several couples. Young people in such school uniforms were holding hands and typing hard on their phones. Shouldn't they be home? Why go for a walk together if you're still looking at the screen? A tall curly haired guy was saying something to his girlfriend in strange English and she was laughing intensely, loud in response periodically adjusting her bra. What's wrong with them? Elderly couple, couple with children, a 40 year old employee and his young mistress with vulgar makeup? My gaze went over every person at the intersection and it seemed like I was the only, I was alone here. My ears were clogged again and my, a lump rose through my throat. The smell of fried squid turned to a sickening stench mingling with the summer heat coffee and women's perfume without even apologizing i pushed my way roughly through the people i was in a hurry to get out of there i felt misplaced again transition i don't remember where or how long i wandered through, uh, thoughtlessly around the city but i came home later than my mom she was sitting at the kitchen table and apparently tried to call me but i didn't answer I muttered something instead of greeting and went straight to my room. 
Oh, Mom, I... Well? Where have you been? I called you. She crossed her arms and leaned back against the doorway. I didn't look at her face, but I could tell from her voice that she was pursing her lips. In the library, exams are coming. I said the first thing that came to my mind without even bothering about the fact that she knew perfectly well that the exams ended today. She clicked her tongue. You smell like beer, and you're not even 20. What a clumsy lie. As if I'm the only one who's not good at lying. How dare you? Do you want to be expelled from the university? You would, not, you would only be happy if I studied 24 hours every day, right? She used to threaten, uh, threaten that I wouldn't pass their enrollment test, and now she's threatened that I'll be expelled? I thought it was it'll be finally over. I'm just worried about your future. I do everything for you. Nothing changes. I'm so tired of hearing that. It can't hurt to take a break sometimes. You sound just like your father. And where is he now? Are you gonna tell me what a loser my father is and that I'll end up like him if, you don't li if I don't listen to you? I turned to face her and crossed my arms over my chest, taking the offensive. Offensive. You know better where he is now. She drew back from my gaze and hesitated. What, what did you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? So are you gonna keep hiding from me that you're go you're back together? Or <laughs> are you finally going to tell me the truth? We aren't. Did he tell you that? Are you still in touch with him? I was so dramatic with the background music. I told him not to. I freaking saw you in the cafe. And those slippers you said you bought me. There was no tag on them, and they're too small for me. I'm not an idiot. She was standing there and gaping, unable to say a single word. I should have stopped, but I couldn't. Anger and resentment resulting from her lie made me blood boil and began to burst out. You forbade me to go home to my father and grandfather, told me to forget my friends. But not yourself, right? I was fine until we moved. I had plans too. I did it for your own good. You need to completely cut yourself off from the past in order to step into the future with a cool head, right? Your grades got really bad and I... Can you stop hiding behind my grades? You dreamed about leaving that place. It was you who didn't want a second child, so don't blame it on me and my so-called selfishness. There was no future for you there, don't you see it? You were a child and you were happy with everything. You had fun playing with the other outdoors, but how would it end? You would have graduated from a high school with pain and misery, kept hands, got married. Doesn't sound so bad, doesn't it? I grinned sarcastically, but my chest still hurt. Cut that comedy! You know you can do more than that. Your father and I do everything for you. We got divorced because you said you were tired of... I'm tired of your lies. And what's the point of that if you're still together just now behind my back? What was it all f What was this all for? I was on your side only because you misled me. If you're so opposed to the fact that you, that me and your father are, I don't mind. I've never been opposed to it. Why don't you understand? Be happy. Just don't lie to me. Don't promise the impossible. Don't you think that brightens bulbs in the box? What does that even mean? In adults, right? Drinking beer with friends? Probably going to start working part-time, living separately? I gathered bra and brows and looked at her different and defiantly. Kicking me out? No. I just want to remind you that the world doesn't circle around you. 
Then I'll go home. You're home. You just kicked me out, didn't you? I... I don't care. At least I, I'll see how things have changed there. Nothing has changed there. So you also went there without me. Toru. Well, fantastic. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to lie to you, but you made me do it. <laughs> By no means, right? Toru. Transition. Oh, I'm online now, okay. After the quarrel with my mom, I could not sleep for a long time. Maybe I finally lost my sleeping schedule, but I felt no fed fattage. There was a can of beer, which we didn't finish, and I took it for myself. I stepped out onto the balcony. In my bare feet, I breathed in the night air of Tokyo. The heat has gone down, but there was still no freshness in the air. The beer wasn't cold either, but I opened it anyway. The phone on my table vibrated. Who's that? It's already the middle of the night. I went back to, uh, into the room and to get my phone. Huh? You have the guts to bend the elbow at home, bro? Mom. Okay. Are you kidding me? It's just a coke. Why are you awake? Does she always hear so well what's going on in my room? I like how he's like miscorrected. Uh, I like coke. Can I take a sip? Okay, you got it. It's beer. Who do you think? Who do you take after to such a liar? Give you, give your guess. Are you gonna continue texting? I don't want to talk to you. You're <laughs> the one that texted him. <laughs> what do you think you're doing now? It's no good traveling there. I have a bad feeling. Are you altering your behavior? And since when do you have a feeling? Something bad is going to happen. Don't take my word for it if you don't want it. And we want. I always obeyed you, but this time I won't. I hope she hasn't split the beans yet. Oh, spelt the bean. Blah. Don't tell dad. Don't tell dad. I like to surprise him. I want to have a look at the surprise face of Erica. I'm against your useless trips. You could just wish it to be safe. I said nothing but and put my phone into all in an almost full bag. The train leaves in three hours, then I'll take a bus. Should I buy her a sick cat? After all, I went back on that promise. Gosh, after all, she is already an adult woman. Maybe she already has a husband, a child. And here I am with my chocolates. Though, I doubt it. I would have definitely been told about it. I dropped aside and sat down on my bed. <sighs> Although I decided to go so suddenly, I couldn't, can't shake the feeling. I buried my face in the pillow. Anyway, after all these years, I hope that the, the stars are still bright there. Transition. Cutting it scene. Exterior. Train station. I don't know. Do I click? Oh, okay. I'm still hearing this. We're on the train. Going by. All right. Okay. All right. More ambience noise. All right. Anything else? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> Head is splitting. I could hardly open my sleepy eyes. Oh, okay, we're on the bus. Space Angel. Space Angel? Oh, okay. There was a dead, alive emptiness in my head. Every fragment of my memory was instantly dissolved in there. What time is it? I shivered from the cold, and with a numb hand, I searched my pocket for a smartphone. I mean, for the smart. That's weird. I felt giddy and nauseous. I can't feel my left hand. Where am I? I had a strange feeling as if I was moving but remained motionless. Just like in a car? I made an effort to open my eyes and blinked several times. Huh? What? Space Angel, what the freak? The image of a real world around me gradually began to clear up. Huh? 
but Finley did not fail me. I really and truly was not in the boot. Huh? Oh, dark figures. Hello. What the fuck? I gave a browser a shot, but quickly recovered and shut my mouth. What in the world are those monsters? It looks like straight in. Look, <laughs> it's looking straight into my eyes. What did I get myself into? I don't remember. I can't remember. I stole a glance at an unknown black entity one more time and instinctively flattened myself against the seat. They absolutely take no notice of me. Did they hear the shout? Maybe I'm just having a nightmare. We were moving very slowly as if we were floating through the mysterious depths of the ocean. In fact, as it seemed to me, we were heading out of the city. Then, it's no wonder that the sky is full of stars. Too beautiful to be a simple nightmare. I breathe a doom sigh. <sighs> and still, if it has been a transit bus, it was not wise to ask the driver to stop in the middle of the road. An advertisement for some cafe was repeating on the TV, which, uh, which the bus was apparently heading. Cafe Space Angel. Hmm. Terra? What on earth is this? It would be better to show a detailed route instead of repeating the same thing. Everything was so unreal eh, that it was more like a dream, but it's, I can still not get rid of the tension and desire to understand the situation. Wait, Terra, isn't that like in Latin mean rock or earth? Oh, all right, hello. The bus suddenly stopped, interrupting my thoughts. When the doors opened, another pair that seemed clumps of black matter entered inside. Okay, um, the door shut as abruptly as they opened as if they didn't want to let me out. I looked at the newly arrived passengers. Is there something wrong with my eyes? If they really wanted to, they would have done something bad to me a long time ago, wouldn't they? Ha ha ha, uh, creep slowly sat down on the seats as if it's slightly levitating over them. I decided to, beha uh, to behave as inconspicuous as possible to fear of attracting the attention of the unknown creatures. I continued to cl uh, calm myself, but panic was growing. No way! I'll wait a bit. As soon as the bus stops again, I'll get off! It does not really matter whether it's re reality or a dream. I do not want to stay with the creepy the creeps any longer. I do not have any idea how much time has passed. A second, a month, an um, eternity? But the bus continued to move. It moved straight forward without ever turning. As soon as I began to feel an overwhelming fear, once again, I heard a pretty familiar voice. Welcome to... <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Like pounding my chest. All right. Welcome to the Cafe Space Angel, dear customers. Please take a ta table and wait for the waitress. For express services, please go to the front desk. What? Hmm. Judging by the voice, the speaker is a girl, but before she can finish her speech, the creep stood up and headed to for the exit. We are truly grateful to you for choosing Terra Bus as your service provider. Have a great day and enjoy your meal. What should I do? Should I get off the bus or stay here? This is probably a bus terminal. Moreover, the voice was cheerful and obviously belonged to a human being. Maybe I should take a look around and find someone who will tell me what on earth is going on here? Ha ha ha. Irony. I tried to blend into the crowd as much as possible and went through the farthest exit from the driver so as not to get a fine for a free ride. Oh, hello. Hello. Phew. That went well. I squeamishly brushed off the black smoke. The creeps marched toward the only building across the moths to the light. 
Hmm. Why are they so formless? Dot 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 dot. Oh no. After I left the bus, I suddenly lost my feeling of safety and found myself in the outer space. I could easily breathe and even stood firm on the ground, but my legs gave away I uh, gave way to the unpleasant feeling of some kind of vulnerability. It was much more convenient and calmer inside the cabin among the familiar seats and handrails. Why did it come out? I looked around convulsively in search of the already dearly beloved bus, but right before my eyes, it darted away with the speed of a bullet. What the hell? Did it move as snail, as a snail pace? Damn it! I swallowed hard. Everything around me seemed very quiet and calm, as if no one cares about me. This suspicious place looked like an ordinary ice cream parlor. Cafe Space Angel. How much did you pay for your ad? I hope this place isn't as a, that expensive. I'll just go in and ask for a call. Or at least find out where I am. I heard a noise somewhere around the garbage cans. Cats? Or another kind of creep? Da -da -da -dots. No, I can't stay here any longer. I made my way to the front door with a quick but uncertain step. Da -da -da -dots. Sink or swim? Ooh, so bright, my eyeballs. Oh, hello. This is nice. This is nice. From the inside, the cafe looked quite futuristic through ordinary. At least it seemed to be simple high-tech tables and chairs. Some familiar melody to pl is playing on the background. If the customers here are strange black masses, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I love this. Okay. Okay, I like the beat of this. All right, I wouldn't be surprised if there were wait waiters or androids. Nevertheless, it is cozier here than I thought. But somehow it's too bright. Like a child who fell from advertising, uh, I began to inspect the room. I was search of a girl who spoke in the megaphone. All the creeps sat peacefully at the tables in the bus, only one by one. No crying children or noisy birthdays. Hmm, I like this place. I smiled ironically. Those creeps that came with me quickly sat down on the empty seats. I'll just ignore them. Looking around just for a few seconds, I followed the gregorous uh, instinct and sat down at the first table and I, that I found in order to not attract too much attention uh, to my person. The place I have chosen was nothing to shout about. It was far from the exit. I could see the only half of the dining room and the counter. Even though I just came in to ask, my stomach was uh, traitorously growling. Blah, blah, blah. I hope it's affordable here. I automatically searched my pocket to get my wallet and check the money. Da, da, da. Okay, I'll just ask to make a call. Unless the same monsters doesn't come up to me now. Oh, hello. While I was trying... Oh, she's blanking. I was trying to think of an escape plan. An ordinary but very pretty human girl approached my table. I mean, have you seen her rings? It's quite lovely. She seemed nervous about something as if she was looking at the guy she loves. Oh, her chest was he uh, heaving, her lips were tightened, and there were fear and embarrassment in her glance. Of course, she did not love me, but something in her behavior seemed strange. She was obviously too tense. Maybe the first day at work? Nevertheless, she was the first to break the awkward silence that arose between us. E excuse me. My heart was pounding, and my brain resol uh, resolutely refused to think. But welcome to the Cafe Space Angel, dear customer. The girl bowed, humbled and embarrassed. That's if I was talking, uh, to, wait, take, if I were taking her as my wife. Um, uh, um, uh, a pretty little thing. I take back of what I said about the monsters. The waitress is an absolute angel. She probably is. Are you all right? What a lovely voice she has. 
I could just change the voice into the most fucked up thing. That would be the funniest thing. All right. Not squeaky and not fake, but smooth and soft, just like a girl of my dreams. Um, I think my half-open mouth was watering. I excuse me? Did you say something? Uh, uh, um, n nothing. I felt terribly embarrassed and cast in my, uh, down my eyes. S sorry. There you go. She thinks I'm an idiot. The waitress noticed that I did not dare to make the order for a long time and decided to uh, take the initiative. Dear customer, you are lucky to get our today's special beverage, the lighthouse in the arms of a Morpheus. Hardly an alcoholic beverage, right? Am I not that kind of dessert, uh, dessert man? It probably costs a lot. You know, I'll have to pass. Could you please, uh, could you please come a little later? Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, you know I have to pass. I could you please come a little later? Damn, I should have just asked for the water. Yeah, you should have just asked for water or just said for the phone. The girl looked at me intently, but then she opened her mouth as if I was, uh, if I, if haven't understood something. Oh, don't worry. Do not worry. You don't need to pay. What? Is this really a dream? I'm sad and happy at the same time. What a strange feeling. Permafrost? I cleared my throat a little and tried to sound confident. I, w uh, I once read about the lucid dreams. It's enough to feel sure of yourself and then everything around you will be transformed at your desire. Really? Then I'll give it a try. It looks like I only agree because it's free. What an idiot. Uh, just a minute, please. The waitress smiled calmly and moved quickly to another table. I continued to follow her with my eyes if I didn't want to be left alone. Oh, oh, this is a nice CG. This is a nice CG. She, look, uh, the, whoever did the art, lovely, fantastic, fucking love it. Damn, uh, the glow effect on that too, and what, what it's like, I, I love it, it's pretty good. She seems so familiar, does she? Funny hairstyle, good shape, nice, I love the soundtrack in the background, it's like, I love it. Nice reassuring voice. I think I might have seen her somewhere in reality, but I can't remember. Apparently having felt my studying glance, she turned round short. So embarrassing. Sad, this is the only this is only a dream. What the fuck? My thoughts were interrupted by you know what? I think I'm gonna leave it off for right here for right now, guys. This is like a good enough episode. Oh wow, that's really hurting my ears now. Cafe Space Angel of Part 1. Part 1, Part 1, I guess? I don't know. This has been nice, so we're going to stay tuned for the next episode, guys. So without further ado, I hope you guys have a good night, good evening, good morning from wherever you come. So peace out and sign out. And sorry it's been taking long for um, new episodes, new shows. It's like I said before, I'm working on a Beyond You theory video which i'm excited to share out sooner or later hopefully renders go oh good um working with my squires and students uh, on how to edit and stuff like working on some films short films um uh, writing a couple books i'm excited and yeah and also helping some of my artist friend get out that art to get commission uh i'll probably talk about that in a separate video but without further ado i hope you guys have a good night good evening good morning from where from so peace out and sign out bye bye